Hello and welcome to the Simplified Organization Show, where real moms chat about realistic home and life management. We want to avoid perfectionism, reject overwhelm, and handle housework and schedules and all the things in a way that builds relationships because our home is a tool and not a showpiece. I'm your host, Misty Winkler. I write and podcast at simplyconvivial.com about homemaking, homeschooling, and doing life cheerfully. I'm also the author of The Convivial Homeschool, Gospel Encouragement for Keeping Your Sanity While Living and Learning Alongside Your Kids. And today I'm joined by my friend, Lauren Scott. Lauren is wife to Nathaniel and mom to two rambunctious boys. When she's not managing her home and homeschooling, she enjoys reading, getting outside, and writing for her blog, keptandkeeping.com, where she seeks to encourage Christian women to rest in grace and labor in love. Welcome, Lauren. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I, I thought we'd get started just kind of by sharing about kind of what's on your plate these days? What kind of stuff do you have to manage when you're managing home? Well, lately, it's been a little bit different than the usual. Um, four months ago, a little over four months ago, my husband fell off a zip line and broke his neck. Five minutes later, my 12 year old fell off the same zip line and <laughs> broke his arm, sending all of us to the hospital. Um, and, you know, we just had the Christmas holiday, uh, <laughs> a week before we traveled to see family, my husband was finally released from the neck brace and uh, able to drive again. So I've been the only driver in the family. And I, I think at times would underestimate what that really required of me. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we haven't actually landed back to normal yet. Kind of just thrown straight into the holidays with a clear bill of health which is wonderful. We're thankful, um, but definitely about to hit reset. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we work at getting organized and figuring things out, but events like that happen that you just have to roll with the punches and figure out how, you know, what's required in the moment. Mm -hmm, for sure. So with those medical concerns happening, but you know, even just normal life that we all experience, overwhelm is pretty normal <laughs> to experience. What has been your experience with overwhelm and trying to not give into it? Yeah, so I have a tendency, my first response is usually to try to stuff the overwhelm, right? Mm -hmm. I don't like this. I feel like I'm not in control. I think that there's a tendency to maybe lie about our circumstances in two different directions. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can say, woe is me. No one else has suffered like I have. No one else is as busy as I am. And I'm not telling the truth about that situation. But I can also go in the opposite direction. And I, I this really was clarified for me this fall and say, well, this isn't that big a deal. I can, I can make things as normal as possible. And to some extent, that's what I should do. I should try to keep up with the responsibilities that I have, prioritize and not allow the situation to completely derail me. But there's, there's normal overwhelm where maybe we just need to get it all out on paper, scratch off a few things and prioritize and move on. Um, but there's a different, thing when it's not merely more to do that you have on your to-do list. It's also the driving is not just I'm giving somebody rides. It's my husband broke his neck and that that could have killed him. Mm -hmm. A serious fall or injury during the recovery phase could have put him in the hospital. So that was heavy. And I realized that in like the first two weeks um and and took appropriate steps to adjust but when you've been going on this the season is extended you know two months later my son is pretty much recovered from his broken arm and I feel like things are normal 
um, I actually went out on the porch, um, which I, I like to do. I hadn't done it all fall, but I was sitting out on the front porch feeling the overwhelm, also feeling like, is my, is my to-do list really that big right now? I don't feel like it is, but so why am I feeling this way? And I realized my husband broke his neck. This is still heavy. This is still a big deal. He came outside. I mentioned that to him and he's like, yeah, <laughs> he has, he had the daily reminder. He's still, you know, stuck in this brace. It wasn't yeah. normal for him, but I was trying to tell myself, this is normal. Why should I feel any heaviness here? Yeah. And it could be hard to figure out what's really going on. Kind of overwhelm almost feels like a fog where you aren't quite, it, mm. it takes a little bit of time to think through it and figure out, well, what's really going on here? Yes, for sure. Yeah. And, and feeling like we ought to be able to get back on top of things like, oh, once I know what it is that's making me feel this way, then I could just like move past it. Mm -hmm. But that's not, that's often not the case. So um, when you realized it wasn't just things on your to do list, uh, how did you kind of process that once you identified the reason for the overwhelm? Yeah, so a big part of it for me was recognize, well, the relief that I felt when I realized this isn't a normal season. So it's, right. it's okay for me to feel some of the heaviness of it. Um, actually gave space for me to respond in a way that mm -hmm. was, was real. I wasn't stuffing anything at that point. Um, and so there's, there's actually a framework that um, I heard from Jonathan Rogers at a homeschool mm -hmm. convention. Uh, what is true, truer, and truest. And so I found that this is super helpful on this, this lower level of what is true. I can acknowledge I feel overwhelmed right now. This is hard. Whatever I'm feeling, even, even what my feelings are telling me, they may or may not be true, but I am experiencing them. And so that's, that's true on one level, but let's look a little bit further up truer. What about what's really happening in my circumstances? Am I telling myself the truth about it? And often just doing that, like a brain dump is a really great way to get it on paper and see what, what things are really at play here. That often helps an awful lot to deal with the feeling and to confront it with you no know, reality. This is what's mm -hmm. going on. But the truest is to lift our eyes a little bit higher and see the ultimate purpose that God has in this. And what Jonathan Rogers emphasized was ultimately seeing that God is using all these things, um, even my fumbles and failures, to conform me to the image of Christ. And that's a really beautiful truth that sometimes we, we can operate in the, I'm going to get over this quickly. I want the quick practical fix. And I will have the theological truth over here, um, but to kind of open <laughs> the discussion, <laughs> to look at them all at the same time and see how um, what God is accomplishing meets me in the midst of what I'm trying to tackle or wrestle through right now. That's beautiful. That's such a great framework. I love that. I found it really helpful. <laughs> I actually used it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you get back from a trip and there's all the unpacking to do. It's, you know, we've got Christmas presents that don't have a home yet. And we just wanted to tackle it all. Um, made a list, didn't get through half the things we wanted to do this morning. And I expressed to my husband, I'm about to go talk about overwhelm. And I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I wasn't laughing about it at the moment. My 12 year old overheard this and he said, well, then you're an expert at it. <laughs> And so, yes, that invited me to laugh, which was, was helpful too. Yeah. Well, you know, it helps adjust our attitude right there and our, our perspective there. And Feeling that's... overwhelmed is normal and natural, but we don't have to give in and panic when it hits. If you're struggling with overwhelm, know that you are not alone and also that you don't have to live in overwhelm. I have a free workshop all about handling overwhelm that I would love to share with you. Just go to answeroverwhelm.com, that's all one word, 
answeroverwhelm.com to get instant access to this free workshop. And then be sure to come back next week for part two of my conversation with Lauren Scott, where she talks about her go-to techniques for organizing her attitude. You don't want to miss that. So I will see you next week. And until then, repent, rejoice, repeat.